fellow philosophers. The Golden Fleece was an abomination. It had no place in this world. Its theft, criminal though it may be, will serve the greater good in the end. This I promise you, or my name is not Faden! You there! I hear a lot of argument, but little reason. Is that the custom of this hall? Flowery speech with no basis in truth? Well, well, well. A mysterious orator interrupts our civil proceedings with puerile and tumid interjection. My name is Jason, and I say your speech is false. Then we must debate, sir. That is, if you have the credentials to speak before such an august company. Hear, hear! Our custom demands that all who speak in this assembly first demonstrate a modicum of knowledge of the subject at hand. Let there be questions and let him offer answers. Certainly you would have no objection to establishing your familiarity with the history of the fleas. For example, a most rudimentary question. Who created the Golden Fleece? Zeus himself is the answer. Ha! He comes undone! Which is more astounding? The absurdity of his response? Or the fact he doesn't know Epimetheus created the fleece? Here's a question any acolyte would be expected to answer. What two gifts did Prometheus grant unto man? Prometheus stole sacred fire from Olympus and gave it to man. And the other gift? What's the answer, Pan? The other gift was an upright form in the image of the gods. An upright form. There's your answer. Just so! Just so! If you speak by proxy, sir, why not simply remove yourself as intermediary and let me speak to the satyr directly? Otherwise, I think we've heard enough from your horned and hirsute companion. Shall we continue? Tell us, who killed the golden ram? It was man who slew the golden ram. Indeed it was. Well said, Jason. A seed of truth. But does it lie on fertile ground, or cling in vain to rocky perches? You seem to possess a rudimentary understanding of the fleece's history. Very well. If nothing else, I'll help expand your education. Charity is a virtue, too. Faden, set the bounds of this discussion. The thesis! The Golden Fleece is an abomination and has no place in the mortal world. The proponent, Faden, a humble servant of this temple and its high priestess. The opposition? 
Jason, an itinerant traveler from parts unknown. Argument? The first. The Fleece is an abomination. Was not he who created it, the Titan Epimetheus, cast down into Tartarus by Zeus for doing so? Clearly, the Lord of Olympus judged the act of creation to be evil and worthy of damnation. Can we not then infer that the product of that act is also evil and worthy of damnation? A persuasive argument. And yet a flawed one. Epimetheus' proud defiance of the command of Zeus was the cause of his undoing. How he defied that command is immaterial. His failing was due to a lack of... Wisdom. He was not wise enough to realize his motives were misguided. First you speak of proud defiance, and then you speak of wisdom. The argument is muddled. This point belongs to Phaedon. I, good sirs, endeavor to provide thesis. But if my opponent cannot supply antithesis, then we will not gain by synthesis. Argument the second. The fleece circumvents the will of the gods and the natural order. The immortal gods look down from mighty Olympus and wish such and such to be. And then Cleophas, the half-wit goat herd, uses the fleece and makes such and such not so. I don't much like this man. No mortal should have the power to countermand the divine scheme of life, death, and afterlife. I, for one, believe the will of the gods should be inviolate to the whims and caprices of imperfect minds. A devout argument indeed. Devout? I say a cold and cynical one. What of men who honor the gods? What of men inspired by the gods? Is my opponent denied that through man the gods can enact their... Justice? Your low opinion of our kind is unfortunate. But even more troubling is your low opinion of the gods. Surely those whose minds are perfect can foresee all outcomes, fleece or not, and ensure a just outcome. Indeed, a stirring rebuttal. You have my support, sir. An untenable retort. The standards of philosophy here are lacking. We continue. Argument the third. Verily, the golden fleece brings out the worst in men. Wars have been waged for its possession. Brother has killed brother to claim its power. Its very presence on Kithra endangers the people of this island. Woe unto he who sleeps upon a bed of gold, for light is his slumber and his trepidation constant. Greece is undoubtedly a more peaceful place without the fleece in it. Insightful words, truly. The man has delusions of adequacy. Do not fool yourself in thinking that a decrease of temptation ensures an increase of peace. Men will fight. They always do. If not for the fleece, then for power. If not for power, then for land. If not for land, then for gold. It's a flawed world, and we are its flawed inhabitants. 
It takes conviction to do what's right in such a world. It takes... Courage. That's how we prove the good in us. Take away the fleece and we are not suddenly made more virtuous. That's an argument made of vapor. Your words soar upon the lofty wings of wisdom. I cast my lot with you, sir. Vapor! Huh. Let us move to the closing arguments. Good sirs. I appeal to the most discriminating sagacity of this assemblage. The fleece is an abomination, a singularity, and singularities are dangerous things. It has the power to conquer nations, the power to raise the living from the dead, and yet it has no conscience. It gives its power indiscriminately to any who can claim it, whether by brutish strength or cunning guile. Why do we risk such calamity? And for what? All that good men should reasonably do, they can accomplish without the fleece. We are better off without it, say I. I am a simple man, and simple men are best equipped to deal with simple truths. I am not one for categorical proclamations of surety, particularly when it comes to subjects outside the ken of my experience. What I do know is this, the fleece is a relic of our common past, intimately tied to that which makes us human. The only thing certain in this life is that nothing is certain. That is the vital condition of our existence, and the fleece is the embodiment of that uncertainty. Yes, it is a singularity, but that is nature. As such, how can the fleece be an abomination. It does not alter our fundamental nature. We are taught that the Titan Epimetheus made the Golden Fleece. But why did he make it? To rival the glory of man. Is the Fleece a risk in evil hands? Yes. But in good hands, it keeps us humble. For there is nothing we can do that it cannot undo. Used with prudence, the Fleece encourages discipline and imparts wisdom, ensures justice, inspires courage. I hope all here would agree that these virtues most certainly have a place in this world. Brilliant! We hear Athena's wisdom. Hear, hear! Well spoken, Jason. Truly, you are a man of many talents. Someone fetch a laurel crown! You can't all be persuaded by this chicanery! Wonderfully said, sir! Bah! It was too much to think this self-important rabble could comprehend simple truths! You, sir, are the most dangerous kind of agitator! And there's only one way to reason with an agitator! There is no debate or argument with evil such as this. Silence, filthy thing! I am the voice of this temple! Look! His tattoos! You are a black tongue! What? Not that it matters now. My work here is done. Slot Medusa was easy work. 
and to the brother proved a coward. No! The fleece left Kithra in the raven's clutch. The black tongues have it now. You fiend! Where is it? Where is the fleece? You will tell me! It is where you cannot find it. Where you cannot even search! <laughs> this shroud, it once belonged to a priest of Hades. We had a debate, he and I. We argued over who was the rightful ruler of Tartarus. He claimed Hades, while I know it to be Hecate. Despite my flawless reasoning, he simply refused to acknowledge the truth. It is a fine blade, is it not? <laughs> When words fail...
Thank you, Jason. I'm ashamed to say I once sat in that hall and shouted praise to Faden. It seems Faden fooled many people on this island. Indeed. He had a way of being persuasive, but he had no answer to your argument. It was an honor to hear you speak. Where did you learn to always in such a manner? I simply spoke what my heart told me. The best speeches are not prepared. We who follow Athena are taught differently. But you certainly were effective in what you did. Thank you again, Jason. Only one remains. Of all my people, Medusa is most responsible for the events that occurred. She has had time and opportunity to reflect upon what she's done. But you must decide her final fate. 